So, we have uh, looked at integer quantum Hall effect uh, in uh, great details almost everything that uh, are relevant we have done that and um, if you remember that uh, we had shown this uh, picture that uh, is there on your screen. So, this is the integer quantum Hall effect. So, this is let us uh, abbreviate it as I Q H E where you see all those plateaus. Uh, so, uh, the left hand side is for the magneto resistance and the right hand side is for the Hall resistance. So, even though it is not clear you know what it means. So, this is a, a nu equal to 1 plateau and then there are nu equal to 2 plateaus, nu equal to 3 plateaus and so on. So, these are the resistivity plots, uh, Hall resistivity plots and along with that there are these um, peaks in the magneto resistance. Uh, uh, behavior as a function of B and you see that the B is pretty large here. I mean it has been taken up to something like uh, 14 or 15 uh, Tesla and um, uh, we uh, are uh, very well aware that why do these plateaus arise in spite of uh, the system being a dirty two dimensional electron gas. Uh, with no time reversal invariance or translational invariance. In fact, uh, the time reversal invariance is the reason or the loss of time reversal invariance is the uh, reason for these uh, plateaus to be quantized and um, uh, they are related to the churn number which is what we have seen. And um, we have also seen that uh, it is a situation in which uh, whenever these uh, Hall plateaus jump from one new value to another new value, uh, it jumps up or jumps down depending upon how you want to view it. The magneto resistance that shows a peak there and so on. So, that is there uh, for all the way uh, to low values of magnetic field. Uh, excepting that at very low values you see that this region you see that there is a linear behavior of the Hall uh, resistance. So, linear behavior and this linear behavior is uh, related to the classical Hall effect that we have uh, all seen either at the school level or young undergraduate level where the Hall resistivity uh, or the Hall uh, coefficient uh, is proportional to B uh, linearly in B and, and the slope gives you information about the density of the carriers and the type of carriers that is whether it is a N type semiconductor or a P type semiconductor. Almost uh, soon afterwards people have found uh, this uh, FQHE and in which um, the fractional plateaus are seen. I completely agree that these are not clear fractions, but uh, one can actually see a fraction as 3.5, uh, there is one at 3.7, there is one at 2.3 and there is one at 4.3 and so on. So, these are plateaus being seen at the fractional values and uh, that is why it is known as FQHE or the fractional quantum Hall effect and uh, this uh, forms the discussion uh, for us for the next uh, few lectures before we wind up the course. So, uh, what are the reasons for these uh, fractional plateaus? Does it mean that uh, there are fractional feelings or uh, electron is uh, divisible where uh, we know that these uh, in terms of the Corbino disc picture uh, there are these uh, uh, the Hall effect or the Hall phenomena is uh, perceived as a Hall uh, or the quantum pump in which there is uh, an electron that has been transferred from the inner edge of the disc to the outer edge and the two electrons being transferred, three electrons being transferred uh, and that forms these uh, plateau labels of the plateaus that we have uh, indicated here as uh, uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. So, if uh, they are uh, fractions that is these labels are fractions would it mean that the electrons are divisible and certainly not in fact that is what we are going to talk about that the electrons are uh, not divisible they are a fundamental you know the electronic charge is a fundamental uh, quantity there is nothing called a, a third of an electronic charge and so on. But uh, still we uh, see plateaus at fractional values. So, we start this discussion on the fractional quantum Hall effect. and which we abbreviate as FQHE ok. So, uh, to show you one more picture 
uh, these are probably a little more clear than the earlier one. So, you see that these are uh, integer plateaus here and uh, let us uh, show the fractional plateaus by a color. So, these are these fractional values 5 by 3, 4 by 3, 2 by 3, 3 by 5, 4 by 7, half and so on and so forth. 2 by 5, 3 by 7, the mostly rational fraction and uh, the proper fractions which means that the denominator is uh, larger than the numerator, but there are also improper fractions uh, that are uh, seen in experiments as well as there are um, different kind of fractions that are noted in experiments and uh, overall about uh, more than 80 such fractions have been noted overall in experiment. So, this is a, a single figure which shows both uh, integer and fractional quantum Hall effects. Okay. So, in order to understand uh, we have to again understand that uh, the uh, energies uh, of these electrons uh, in, in a magnetic field which we already know, uh, but uh, does anything change in this fractional quantum Hall effect and turns out that nothing changes excepting that um, these uh, wave functions uh, are found to have a radial symmetry and um, in fact, these are called as Laughlin states which we will uh, see and um, or these uh, Landau levels rather have radial symmetry and these uh, uh, have to be worked out. So, what I am going to show is um, I am going to take a gauge uh, that captures this uh, radial symmetry and uh, this is called as a symmetric gauge and in this gauge we shall uh, do calculations and we will find out the uh, degeneracy of the Landau levels and uh, the wave functions that are uh, relevant for the discussion. Okay. So, let us start with the gauge. So, so, we start with the symmetric gauge. And uh, let me mention a priori that uh, uh, there is a lot of mathematics that is going to follow. Uh, they are mostly algebra and simple algebra, but uh, they need to be done in order to understand what is the nature of the wave function and how we can write it in terms of uh, you know particularly uh, in terms of complex numbers like z which is equal to x plus i y and so on. And um, uh, before that I uh, urge the readers to have a look at the simple harmonic oscillator in uh, spherical polar coordinates. Okay. So, uh, you know that uh, one dimensional oscillators have energy which is n plus half h cross omega, there is no degeneracy, but in 2D uh, in Cartesian coordinates it has n x plus half plus n y plus half h cross omega, omega is still given by this root over k by m and now there is degeneracy there. Now, if you go to three dimensional spherical polar coordinate, if you solve the problem in three dimensional spherical polar coordinates, you will see the uh, importance of uh, the angular momentum uh, operator and uh, uh, the quantum number corresponding to the angular momentum quantum number uh, is important to find out the degeneracy. Uh, you can look at any uh, good quantum mechanics book, uh, in particular you can look at uh, Kohenthanoji uh, which gives you a very nice introduction about uh, the this problem that is a simple harmonic oscillator in 3D uh, spherical polar coordinates. Okay. And uh, this actually would help you a lot in understanding uh, this part uh, because we are still going to get uh, these harmonic oscillator these energies as well as a wave function. So, we start with the symmetric gauge what I mean by symmetric gauge is that for constant magnetic field uh, which we know that in this particular case it is a constant. So, there is a two dimensional electron gas which uh, is uh, pierced by a uniform field in the z direction and we write down the gauge as half uh, r cross b. Okay. Um, so you see if you remember that we have taken this a to be like uh, uh, you know minus y b x cap uh, or we have taken it as uh, uh, x b y cap and so on okay, which are same and this is called as a Landau gauge. And uh, uh, in this particular gauge uh, what came out is that after we have solved the problem the energy levels came out as n plus half h cross omega where n can take values as 0, 1, 2 etcetera. Now, uh, depending on the gauge chosen of these two that is uh, it is minus y b x cap or x b y cap there is uh, either k x or k y 
um, they continue to be uh, good quantum numbers and any value of k x and its quantization would uh, be uh, you know acceptable uh, for uh, any given value of n. And that gives rise to an enormous degeneracy into the problem that is there are very large number of uh, quantum states that are available for the electrons to occupy which means that each Landau level is heavily uh, occupied uh, by electrons or they are heavily degenerate. Uh, however, we are foregoing that constraint that is neither uh, k x nor k y uh, continue to be uh, good quantum numbers, but instead we will see that the uh, L z or the j z that is the uh, z component of the angular momentum quantum number. Uh, it is probably safer to call talk about j z because uh, uh, where L z and j z would mean the same thing because there is no spin involved. Uh, but uh, we will uh, talk about uh, JZ. Uh, you have to keep in mind that if you look at another book, uh, it might actually talk about LZ, but they would uh, mean the same thing. All right. So, uh, this is equal to half of minus B Y uh, X cap plus a B X Y cap. Okay. So, that is the form of the vector potential and um, uh, this choice of uh, the gauge uh, actually breaks the uh, the translational symmetry in both the x and the y directions which means that kx and ky cease to be uh, good uh, or conserved quantities so to say okay and and this will be very uh, helpful for us to understand uh, the fractional quantum hall effect so uh, we'll find out the momentum and the momentum let's write it as uh, the momentum which is p plus ea uh, this momentum let's call it as some momentum called as pi and uh, this uh, is uh, important to understand that uh, this uh, momentum is gauge invariant, but it is not a canonical momentum. Uh, what I mean by a canonical momentum is that uh, x and x component of pi uh, do not have these uh, commutation relations which are i h cross. So, if they have then they are called as canonical, but these can be shown as uh, they uh, do not obey the canonical relations, but uh, nevertheless these are uh, gauge invariant uh, momentum. So, we use this just like uh, what we have done it for uh, the first course of quantum mechanics uh, to study linear harmonic oscillators. We have used uh, P and X combinations linear combinations of P and X in order to write A and A dagger. Here uh, we will uh, do a different thing, but something similar that is we will write down these uh, uh, creation and annihilation operators namely A and A dagger to be uh, so A dagger is uh, creation and uh, uh, A is annihilation operator. So, uh, these will be written in terms of uh, the x component of pi and the y component of pi. So, what I mean by that is uh, your A is equal to so it is uh, a pi divided by uh, H E B. Uh, this is equal to uh, pi x minus i pi y and a dagger equal to pi divided by h e b and pi x plus i pi y. So, I hope the discussion that uh, we had uh, done so far is clear and the rational or the motivation is clear. The motivation is that we are going to talk about uh, the fractional quantum hall effect, uh, but however doing a full calculation leading to the conductivity is something that we will not do rather because we have done that using the Kubo formula and here there is a lot of numerical uh, calculations involved uh, in order to you know verify various things such as uh, you know the plateaus or the this fractionally quantized plateaus and so on. So, we will not do that rather we will uh, concentrate more on the uh, nature of the wave function and that to the lowest Landau level and various things uh, various properties related to the quantum hall fluid. So, in order to do that uh, we have noted that uh, the most suitable this gauge here is the symmetric gauge and not the Landau gauge that we have seen earlier uh, and in this symmetric gauge we have uh, do this problem uh, that is the problem of electrons in a magnetic field and find out the energy eigenvalues and uh, in order to do that uh, we have uh, written down some uh, annihilation and creation operators in terms of these 
uh, canonical momentum uh, sorry uh, non canonical momentum but gauge invariant momentum which are pi pi x and pi y the components of that ok. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, of course, uh, your um, a a dagger commutation relation you can easily find out this is something that uh, even though I expect you to do let me uh, do that because we are uh, introducing these things for the first time. So, this is uh, both get multiplied the prefactors get multiplied and we have a, a pi x minus i pi y and a pi x minus uh, plus i pi y ok. So, that is uh, your a dagger and so on and uh, so there is a, and there is a, a pi x plus i pi y um, and pi x minus i pi y. All right. So, this is uh, something that one has to calculate and uh, let us do that quickly. Uh, it is H E B and uh, so this is a pi x square plus i pi x pi y plus pi y square plus uh, minus pi x square uh, plus i pi x pi y and minus i pi y pi x and uh, uh, pi y square and so on. So, if you simplify that a little uh, you get this a a dagger as 2 pi i by e b h a uh, pi x pi y minus a pi y pi x. Now, these are uh, simple things uh, you should be able to do and this is nothing but uh, this is i by e b uh, h cross and this is equal to pi x pi x pi y commutator. So, a and b uh, they do not commute of course, uh, which we know and the commutation is uh, expressed in terms of pi x pi y. Now, if you remember that if these were canonical momentum then p x p y should be equal to 0 because the x component of p has got nothing to do with uh, the y component, but they are not canonical as we have said earlier. Um, so, we just say that they are not canonical because uh, uh, x i pi j uh, this is not equal to uh, delta i j. What I mean is uh, I mean i h cross delta i j if you like i h cross delta i j or uh, just uh, let me write it as delta i j and so on ok. Uh, ok, you can write that and then of course, you have a pi i pi j is not equal to delta i j as well ok. So, that is why they are not canonical all right. So, uh, these are uh, some of the features of this. Uh, of course, as I said that they are gauge invariant and so on. So, uh, one can actually prove the, the commutation relation as uh, uh, this pi i pi, uh, pi j plus e a i. So, this and a p j plus e a j this this is equal to minus e and there is a del a del x i minus del a i. Uh, this is a j and this is x j and this is equal to minus e epsilon i j k uh, b k. I am writing in the tensor notation, but you do not have to, but you work it out. Uh, uh, remember that these p i and p j the, these are canonical momenta and then work out various things you will get this ok. So, if you put in there then a a dagger becomes equal to. So, i over e b h cross multiplied by minus i e h cross b and uh, these will cancel and will give you equal to 1 ok. So, a a dagger commutation is equal to 1 and uh, these are important ok. Now, uh, in order to understand the degeneracy of the Landau levels, we are simply now playing with the Hamiltonian various terms of the Hamiltonian and writing them in terms of this pi x and pi y operators and these are momentum operators as I said they are gauge invariant, but uh, non canonical 
okay. And uh, we can introduce another variable. So, introduce a pi tilde, this is of course a vector, vector pi tilde, this is equal to a pi minus E a. Okay. The advantage with this you will see in a moment, uh, it, it has the other property that uh, pi tilde is not gauge invariant, but canonical. Okay. So, we introduce this uh, pi tilde operators and write them in terms of the pi operators all right. And also it has to be kept in mind that uh, uh, the vector potential enjoys a gauge freedom which we can write it as uh, a minus grad chi where uh, chi is some scalar quantities and uh, the reason that such a thing exists because your curl of a has to give you a b. So, a curl of A prime uh, should also give you a B which is curl of A minus uh, grad chi, uh, chi being a scalar. So, let us write that. So, an arbitrary scalar, it can be any scalar. Okay. So, this is equal to curl of A and uh, minus curl of uh, grad chi and this is equal to 0 simply for the reason that uh, grad chi is a direction, it is a vector which has a particular direction. If you try to take a curl of it that is whether it rotates or not and it of course, does not rotate and that is why it is equal to 0. So, a curl of A prime will give you a B the magnetic field that you want and as well as curl of A. So, and that is why you can write down A to be uh, ambiguous by the amount A minus uh, grad chi, chi being a scalar. Okay. And uh, so, this will um, enable us to write a pi tilde prime okay, which is equal to a P prime uh, minus E A prime minus grad chi. Okay. Uh, that is what is uh, there. If you uh, lift the prime, then you have you can lift prime all throughout and then you have to drop the uh, grad chi as well. So, the important thing is that uh, for these uh, uh, these commutation relations of these quantities, uh, okay, now let me not write it with a vector anymore, we write it with just a tilde. So, I well x say for example and pi y uh, tilde uh, prime is equal to uh, i e h cross by b. Of course, um, this sort of differ from the commutation relations of pi x and pi y by just a sign, but uh, there is um, an additional advantage because each of these uh, pi i um, tilde and pi j prime tilde this is equal to 0, which means that they are canonical. So, this primed momenta uh, they are canonical whereas, the unprimed momenta even though they are gauge invariant they are not canonical. Okay. All right. So, this is our discussion so far and uh, so this is it is good that it is equal to 0. So, if you want to write down the Hamiltonian in terms of uh, these A and A dagger operator, then one can write it as uh, it is a A dagger A plus half uh, that is the form of the Hamiltonian. You can check that uh, with the definitions of A and A dagger if you write them and then you will get this. Uh, so, your uh, Hamiltonian will become equal to let me write it here. Uh, so, your Hamiltonian will be equal to you know. So, this uh, P uh, x or rather p plus e a p plus e a whole square by 2 m. Okay. So, this is the uh, the p changes to p plus e a and so on and then of course, you write it in terms of pi and then when you do that then convert it into the a and a dagger and this uh, certainly gives you the 
the number density or the number operator corresponding to this uh, problem. So, this is equal to nothing but equal to h cross omega b uh, n plus half uh, and uh, n is equal to 0, 1, 2 which denote the indices of the Landau level. Okay. So, that is our Hamiltonian and written now in terms of the um, operator. So, it is uh, n cross uh, I mean n operator which is a number operator and uh, it is uh, written in the Fox states. The problem as we have already uh, figured out that if you do it in the symmetric gauge and when none of k x and k y are uh, conserved quantities, it is difficult to see that uh, where the degeneracy is coming from because that is where in the Landau gauge we have gotten this um, degeneracy from the conserved quantities such as k x or k y depending on the gauge chosen. But here uh, both are non conserved quantities and hence finding the degeneracy is a bit challenging, but then we know that what the solution is the solution would be introducing the angular momentum operator. And in order to do that uh, let me introduce new set of operators. Okay, and the new set of operators are nothing but uh, so this b which is equal to 1 divided by uh, 2 e h cross b and uh, pi x tilde plus i pi y tilde that is your b and the b dagger is of course uh, the minus sign that goes inside the bracket. So, it is 2 e h cross b and a pi x tilde minus pi uh, y tilde. Okay. So, these are the b and the b dagger operators and you can check that uh, b, uh, b dagger is equal to 1. Okay. And these uh, b and the b dagger will uh, give degeneracy of the levels. Okay. So, that we will see how. So, uh, now we of course, have one quantum number. So, what are the quantum numbers that we have? So, we have of course, n which is uh, which ha appears in the Hamiltonian which is uh, the eigenvalue of uh, the n operator the number operator which acts on the Fox space giving us a number of oscillators present in the problem. And uh, the other one is m uh, which comes from so, this is included in the energy and this is included in the angular momentum operator. And uh, what I mean by angular momentum operator such as uh, if it is a z component of the angular momentum then z is equal to you know it is like r cross p uh, and uh, the z component of that assuming that uh, we are not talking about spin otherwise this would just be L z. Okay. So, our uh, quantum numbers become uh, there are two quantum numbers which are n and m and this should label uniquely the uh, the Landau levels or the wave functions corresponding to the Landau level. Okay. So, let us write these things as a, a ket comprising of these uh, numbers. So, this n and m. So, this is equal to a dagger n a b dagger m and uh, this is uh, divided by n factorial m factorial so, this acting on the vacuum 0 0 will give us a Landau level uh, starting from the from the vacuum. Okay. And of course, we know that that a uh, 0 0 uh, is nothing but equal to 0 and as well b acting on 0 0 
gives nothing but 0. Basically, uh, that uh, you cannot lower these n and m indices any further uh, that is why the a acting on 0, 0 or the b acting on 0, 0 uh, will give you 0. Like uh, a and b in their respective ways they are the uh, annihilation operator. You cannot annihilate anything below 0 uh, that is why these things give you 0. And what is the Hamiltonian for this? So, Hamiltonian is 1 over 2 m and we have a pi dot pi uh, that is the momentum and this is nothing but equal to 1 over 2 m uh, p plus E a whole square. Okay. Now, we bring in all those uh, uh, non canonical momentum, but that are gauge invariant in order to write h you can also write it in terms of pi tilde it really does not matter. Okay. We will have to construct the Landau level wave function. So, if you look at one slide before uh, two slides rather uh, you see this energy expression that you see I mean or the Hamiltonian is simply that of a harmonic oscillator it is a simple harmonic oscillator and even you can think about it in uh, just one dimension where 1 n is just the quantum number one single quantum number that can take values n equal to 0 1 and 2. Okay. So, uh, now we have to find the degeneracy and find the wave function. And in order to do that, uh, let us um, you know uh, write down again this A operators which are 1 divided by in terms of this pi over H E B. This can also be written as uh, using uh, H cross equal to H over 2 pi. So, we can write this down equal to 2 E H cross B pi x minus i pi y and um, this is equal to 1 divided by root over 2 e h cross b and uh, this is equal to a p x minus i p y and uh, a plus uh, e a x minus i a y. Okay. So, if you write down this pi x in terms of p x and a x and pi y in terms of p y and a y. So, this is the thing. Now, what I will do is that I will introduce this p x equal to minus i h cross uh, del del x okay. and uh, then from there we will uh, do something else. Let us see what uh, we do from there. So, it is 2 e h cross b and we have minus i h cross uh, del del x minus i del del y plus e. Um, now, I will write a x and a y also in terms of b. So, it is e b by 2 and a minus y minus i x. Okay. This is quite important because uh, you know your a that is um, the vector potential the a x and the a y they are position dependent quantities. Okay. In this case it is very clear that they grow linearly with x and y and because of this uh, really the, the momentum becomes uh, non canonical because of these uh, position dependent terms and that is why uh, it refuses to give rise to those canonical commutation relations that we are very familiar in uh, quantum mechanics. Okay, so, this is uh, the form of this uh, A and we'll, we can also write down A dagger and so on. So, we will use this um, quantities here that you see and you see here we will use uh, complex numbers for these quantities. So, we will use a z is equal to x plus uh, or x minus i y and uh, we use a z tilde as x plus i y. You might wonder that why I am using the opposite definition uh, that is z is usually taken as x plus i y and z tilde is taken as or z star rather is taken as uh, x uh, minus i y, but here we have taken. So, z tilde is nothing but z star. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we are doing it for a purpose uh, that is uh, z is taken in this particular fashion. Uh, for a given reason and let us um, also define uh, a shorthand notation that is half of uh, del del x uh, plus i del del y which appear here as you see which appear here that is del del x minus i del del y or 
uh, del del x plus i del del y this we write it as delta ok. So, this is delta uh, just a shorthand notation and uh, similarly we will use a uh, half of uh, del del x uh, minus i uh, del del y uh, this is equal to. So, this is not 0 just to make sure this is like this and this is like this ok. So, uh, this uh, del or del tilde is what uh, these things are and um, uh, this is important to understand that del z uh, is equal to uh, del z tilde uh, this is uh, or del tilde z tilde is equal to 1 because you see that uh, if you take this del z this is equal to half of uh, del del x plus i del del y. Uh, and this is going to act on this z which is x minus i y. And uh, this will be half del del x of x will be equal to 1 and del del x of i y will be 0 and uh, i del del y will be uh, of x is will be 0 and del del y of that uh, will be equal to 1, but then there is a minus i square. So, that will give you a 1 and this will give you a 1 ok. Then that is why you can check for the other one as well. So, this uh, del z, uh, so this is an operator uh, which is of the form that we have shown here. So, this acting on the z will give you uh, 1 and so on ok. So, in fact, uh, now uh, these um, a and a dagger. So, we will write a and a dagger in terms of the coordinates z. I mean I am using this inside quotes because x and y are definitely coordinates. So, z is a coordinate which is a combination of x and y but now in the complex plane because it is x plus i y or x minus i y ok. So, a is equal to a minus i root 2 uh, l b that is a magnetic length that we have studied uh, plus a z uh, for l b uh, this is some specific way of writing in order to make uh, sort of the notations uh, simple and this is a uh, l b tilde minus uh, z tilde this is a um, uh, 4 l b. Uh, this will not be a tilde ok all right. So, this is fine now l b is equal to uh, h cross over e b root over h cross over e b which is what uh, we have uh, studied earlier uh, it, it is basically the magnetic length. Uh, and it is related to the guiding center which we have discussed this motion of the electrons in um, a magnetic field ok. So, um, these are some of the notations some algebra, algebra is very simple just finding out commutation relations etcetera you can easily do that. Uh, so, this tells you that uh, what we do is a acting on 0 m uh, that has to be equal to 0 ok. So, we will start with the state which is starting with the wave function n m ok. Just making sure that you understand what this n m are n is equal to the, the quantum number corresponding to the energy and m is uh, still what we are yet to find it is the angular momentum uh, quantum number corresponding to j z or l z ok. This is true because uh, if uh, n is equal to 0 uh, then applying uh, this annihilation operator would yield you 0 this is the usual property of the Fox state that the, the state where there is no oscillator you cannot reduce it any farther. So, uh, this tells you now I will put the form of i and that uh, tells you that this a is equal to a is equal to l b delta uh, plus uh, z and 4 l b and uh, 0 m that should be equal to 0 ok. Now, that tells you 
okay so this makes sure that this is delta so this operator acting on 0 m ket would give you 0 because there is the n quantum number is equal to 0 so you cannot reduce it any further and so on. So, if you open this up and uh, do a little bit of calculation so these uh, 0 m is uh, let us call it as the uh, L psi L L L and is a function of z and z tilde L L L means lowest Landau level. Okay. So, if we take the lowest Landau level and, and then put m equal to 0 as well, then this has a form unnormalized form is minus z mod square divided by 4 l b square. Okay. And this is nothing but it reminds you of the, the ground state wave function for the harmonic oscillator. So, this is the ground state corresponding to m equal to 0, there is no m here and in terms of the coordinates this is written as exponential minus mod z square by 4 l b square, l b is uh, what we said earlier, l b is equal to this and uh, this is just the Gaussian like this. in the complex plane. So, this is uh, you know, uh, so this is psi of z, uh, so this is a function of z and z tilde or z or z star and this is at z equal to 0. So, this is uh, of the form of a Gaussian, this is well known that the uh, lowest uh, wave function for the harmonic oscillator is just a Gaussian. As you go to you know larger and larger uh, or rather excited states, you will have a uh, a polynomial coming in uh, as a coefficient and this polynomial has properties such as this uh, correspond to even n it has it is an even polynomial and corresponding to odd n uh, we have an odd polynomial. Thankfully, uh, we will be talking uh, mostly about the, uh, the lowest Landau level here and then uh, we should be uh, happy with this, this Gaussian form that you see here. Okay. If you want to have an answer that what is what is it for L L L m not equal to 0 and as a function of z and z tilde then it should be uh, some it is like a z over L b uh, to the power m that is a polynomial and then z square divided by 4 L b square. Okay. So, this is the Gaussian multiplied by a polynomial and so on. Now, we will introduce, introduce the and uh, just for our notation we will write it as j z instead of l z, but as I said that you can uh, C L Z written in some books and notes. So, uh, we just use the total uh, quantum number uh, notation J. So, this J Z is nothing but equal to H cross which is of course, the scale of the problem and Z del and minus Z tilde del tilde. Okay. So, just to remind you that these are the definitions of delta and delta tilde. Okay. And this um, z is of course, x minus i y and z tilde is x plus i y. I told you that this is uh, not in the conventional form, but this is what suits us the best in terms of these um, the definitions that you know of z and z uh, star or z tilde. Okay. So, this is the z uh, that you have and then uh, of course, just to remind you that z is equal to x minus i y z tilde equal to x plus i y and uh, delta is equal to uh, half of del del x plus i del del y, half of del del x plus i del del y and delta tilde is equal to half of del del x minus i del del y. Okay these are the definitions and this is that and, and you can check that your j z acting on these uh, psi l l m okay, 
even for m equal to 0 it gives you m h cross psi l l m which is a known result uh, even in uh, say hydrogen atom problem. So, uh, you put all these z and delta and then take this uh, the, the form that you have uh, do not put uh, the form of z keep z as z z, as z and z tilde as same and uh, uh, remember that your z mod square is nothing but equal to z z tilde. Okay. So, when you take a derivative with respect to z it will be left with a z tilde and uh, when you take a derivative with respect to z tilde it will be left with a z ok. So, that is how ok. So, this is that um, relation that you have. So, m r uh, m is the uh, angular momentum quantum number. So, do not make a sort of confusion between m to be equal to mass and m to be equal to the angular momentum quantum number. I, if you feel that there is a problem then you can write this m as m j ok. But uh, if you feel it is fine we know how to distinguish between them uh, then uh, you can write it as m ok. So, we have taken a gauge which is symmetric and in the symmetric gauge neither of k x and k y were uh, constants and we wrote down the Hamiltonian in that symmetric gauge solved it and got a result which is identical uh, to uh, what we have gotten it with the Landau gauge for an electron in a in presence of a magnetic field. Uh, and it should be because the result should not depend upon the gauge because energy is a uh, is a physical observable or it is a measurable quantity uh, that should not depend on the choice of the gauge and uh, uh, which we have seen. And um, uh, then we have uh, gone ahead and calculated uh, or rather introduced various uh, quantities such as a and b and wrote down h in terms of a and b looked at the commutation relations of a and b in order to understand uh, do they uh, correspond to and then uh, finally use them in order to write down the, um, the Hamiltonian and then j z and then uh, j z acting on this uh, psi l l l will give me the lowest Landau level and corresponding to any m. So, m is the degeneracy m equal to 0 correspond to the lowest Landau level, m equal to 1 will also correspond to. So, this value of m will uh, get you the degeneracy that we have uh, even in the case of Landau gauge uh, where the uh, conserved quantities such as kx and ky gave us a Landau level degeneracy. Now, the Landau level degeneracy is given by this value of m or mj that you see. I will remove this j. Uh, and just uh, hope that you do not make a mistake between m to be the angular momentum quantum number and m to be the mass ok. So, you can write down h equal to 1 over 2 m this m to be the mass and not the m above ok the quantum number. All right. This is equal to p plus e a uh, square and so on and then I can write it down in terms of uh, all these uh, things. These are customary, but they are uh, quite important to. So, it is 1 over 2 l b square and this is equal to minus i del del x uh, minus y by 2 square plus minus i del del y plus x by 2 square this is the Hamiltonian and if you use uh, variables such as x uh, minus i y which is what we have done and z tilde equal to uh, or we can do a z star here which is equal to x plus i y. Uh, so, uh, z plus i y and uh, write down this as r e to the power i theta or minus i theta and write this as r e to the power i theta plus i theta. So, z star and z tilde are identical ok. You can write it with whatever uh, notation you want. So, the derivatives can be written as uh, so a del del x can be written as a del del z plus a del del z star and uh, a del del y can be written as 
uh, minus uh, i uh, del minus i del del z minus del del z star. So, this is del del x and del del y. Uh, so, in terms of this z and z star, uh, the Hamiltonian can be written as 1 by 2 L b square uh, 1 over z uh, 1 over 4 z square minus 4 del 2 del z del z star minus z del del z uh, plus z star del del z star. Okay. And uh, it is basically uh, this has uh, some similarities with uh, the harmonic oscillator, but uh, the similarity is not very well defined because of these uh, you know mixed derivatives like z z uh, del del z and z star del del z etc etc. But um, these mixed derivatives are the main thing. Now, uh, we can use these uh, same set of ladder operators that we had done earlier which are b and b dagger and so this is equal to b equal to 1 by root 2 uh, z star by 2 uh, plus 2 of del del z. This is your b and uh, your uh, b uh, dagger is equal to 1 by root 2 uh, z over 2 minus 2 del del z star. You can change all your z tilde to z star if you want. And this is uh, a equal to uh, 1 by root 2 uh, z by 2 plus 2 del del z star. Now, I am writing both the a and the b operators together and, uh, and your a dagger is equal to 1 by root 2 uh, z star by 2 uh, minus 2 del del z. So, these are my uh, a and b operators and uh, a and b operators have a similarity that both of them uh, their commutation relations uh, they obey equal to the commutation relations obey equal to 1 and uh, it can be written as uh, so h is equal to uh, a dagger a plus half this is the Hamiltonian of course, your h cross omega etcetera they are absorbed in the definition because of these uh, l b square being there and um, the angular momentum So, j z is written as uh, this is an usual definition that you know in terms of the it is a derivative of only the phi. So, this is equal to minus h cross uh, z del del z minus z star del del z star and this is equal to a dagger a minus b dagger b. Okay. So, that is the form of this z uh, and the eigenvalues of z are z are uh, minus uh, you know they are minus m h cross and uh, m uh, varies from minus n to plus n. Okay. So, this is quite important that this is the degeneracy of the Landau levels. So, for each n it will vary uh, like this. Okay. So, b will decrease m by 1 unit and b dagger will increase uh, the m value by 1 unit just like any of the ladder operators uh, whereas, a dagger increases n by 1 unit and uh, decreases a decreases n by 1 unit. So, b uh, dagger uh, increases increases m by 1 unit b decreases m by 1 unit a increases n by 1 unit a dagger a decreases n by 1 unit and so on. So, these are the uh, reasons that we have so far introduced them and um, we have carefully dealt with them and m uh, goes from minus n to 
plus n and so on. So, it is like uh, that the harmonic oscillator problem now has two indices and these two indices are the wave function have two So, for a given value of n uh, there are so many values of m possible between minus n to plus n and then you go to another value of n again from minus n to plus n uh, all these values are possible and these n and m can be written as uh, b dagger to the power n plus m divided by root over of n plus m factorial and uh, a dagger to the power n uh, divided by root over n factorial and uh, so this is uh, 0 0 ok. Just like we uh, create the excited states uh, in the harmonic oscillator by um, applying uh, these a and a dagger uh, or rather we uh, built excited states by applying a dagger successively uh, once, twice, thrice and so on in order to get the first excited state second excited state and third excited states. Here we get the uh, different Landau levels or uh, the wave functions corresponding to the Landau levels by uh, applying uh, both the A and B operators in this particular fashion. Suppose you want to get to 1 1 in which case uh, the n is equal to 1 in that case uh, m has to become equal to 0 and then you can uh, write down. So, uh, 0 0 what we have written down earlier is a, a simple Gaussian now we are writing the uh, normalization which is equal to exponential minus z mod square by 4 l b square uh, once again just to remind you that this is equal to a z z star ok. Of course, uh, these uh, a 0 0 obeys uh, equal to b 0 0 that obeys equal to 0. So, you cannot annihilate any further and um, if you su successively apply b dagger uh, m times on 0 0 you will get a state which is 0 m of course, because uh, it, it creates builds up the m values and this will give us a z to the power m exponential minus mod z square by 4 l b square and uh, this is the normalization is 2 pi uh, 2 to the power m m factorial ok. So, these are uh, the properties of the Landau levels and as I said that uh, for a given m you will have to have a polynomial which is uh, z to the power m uh, there is a normalization constant that appears there and so on. So, each time you operate uh, a b dagger on the 0 0 state you get a z. So, you operate it twice you get a z square and so on and so forth. Now, I will uh, simply write down this n m state which is a general Landau level which is not of too much of relevance to us, but uh, still uh, for the sake of completeness because we will be mostly talking about the lowest Landau level. This is just for an expression that you may keep it for record. So, it is 2 to the power 2 uh, m plus n and uh, n factorial m plus n factorial that is the normalization and this is equal to a b dagger. Uh, m plus n and exponential minus z mod square by 4 l b square that is a general uh, Landau level ok. This is the expression for a general Landau level and so on and then you can write down this in terms of these uh, z and z star and so on so forth and uh, let me uh, still write it once. So, that uh, so this is 2 pi uh, 2 to the power 2 m plus n n factorial m plus n factorial and a z star minus 2 del del z star to the power n z minus 2 del del z to the power m e to the power minus z square by 4 l b square. 
So these are the general Landau levels. So you want a particular Landau level say a, n equal to say 3, m equal to 2 and so on and so forth. You can uh, put, adjust that power accordingly 3 and 2 and then take a derivative of the Gaussian term that you see on the right uh, and then uh, you know find out the wave function corresponding to that uh, value of n and m. Uh, we'll uh, next talk about the properties of these Landau levels uh, and uh, these are in particular called as the Laughlin uh, wave functions uh, which has been written down by Laughlin uh, purely from an intuitive uh, viewpoint and um, uh, these uh, the some of the properties we will talk about. Mm -hmm.